Hello everyone. Welcome to our Growth Fit interview series. Uh, my name is Ashwin Kumar and I am the co-founder and CEO of Custom Fit. Today, let's welcome Mike Korba. He supports the online business around the world in implementing and using the marketing automation technologies really successful. Right. So helping the business to grow by automated communication with a personal touch is, uh, you know, the, uh, the the fine touch there. Right. Uh, Mike is a chief commercial officer and co-founder at user.com. Right. So user.com is all about, you know, like the, the Mike's mo uh, the major work is all about converting the uh, visitors to the free trials and from the free trials to the customers and from customers to the ambassador thing with their technology uh, you know, at the user.com. So let's hear the story of Mike, how he transformed himself from the teacher position to the, you know, the co-founder position where he is handling all the marketing efforts. Um, welcome, Mike. Uh, Hello, good to Ashwin. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you for having me here. You, you, you've presented me pretty well. So, so you, you've stolen my pitch. Yeah, I don't have to <laughs> describe what user.com is. Yeah, so, so thank you for that. So, yeah, please, uh, you know, walk us through, you know, your journey in your marketing life. Like, please take us through your marketing life, how it looks like from seeing so, that side. Uh, currently, I'm a CCO, so Chief Customer mm -hmm. Officer uh, mm -hmm. in user.com, and I'm in user.com from the beginning. Uh, I'm one of the co-founders, so uh, we are on the market from five years. First, I was starting as a uh, first salesperson, so, so I was a sales guy. Uh, then I started to implement our solution, so I was the first uh, person who was like head of implementation while our company uh, was growing. Uh, it was a whole department and currently I'm uh, combining two roles, so I'm chief of support and success and chief of marketing so so uh we combine this two functions and we've called it not a cmo and chief of customers uh, in the one position so i'm a chief of uh, customers in terms of uh, my previous um, uh, jobs uh, before user.com i had another startup but it didn't went well so so um, i was a ceo in user.com i have this privilege uh, position that i'm not a ceo so i can like sleep well and <laughs> the uh, my friend is like have everything on his head I, i'm just like focusing on on marketing and on keeping our customers uh, happy uh, so i was a ceo Previously, I was working, before this startup, I was working in advertising agency. So I was creating websites, I was doing mobile applications, some online campaigns, and I was there for more than uh, seven years, I believe, or eight years. <laughs> Previously, I was working uh, as a consultant uh, in a PR um, agency. So I was young junior PR manager. And uh -huh. previously I've done a lot of job. Yeah, I've, I was uh, a bartender, I was a waiter, I was working on promotions in supermarkets. Uh -huh. So uh, almost 20 years uh, right now, I'm working in marketing or sales. And more, from more than 10 years, I specialize in online marketing. And currently, from maybe five years, I, I'm specializing in area of marketing automation with user.com, but this is like our second name. Uh, we've uh, started as a user engage first yeah. IO and then user engage.com. Yeah, yeah so really good like to see uh, the transformation, Mike, like, you know, from that different phases to here, okay, you know, how he gradually picked up the marketing side and even okay, started the company and he phased it, okay, into, into from the user engaged to user.com, right? So, uh, like, I would like to know more about, uh, you know, can you just uh, let us know more about user.com, uh, you know, what you guys do that will help us to set the context for the viewers. 
Okay, so we are a marketing automation solution and a customer data platform. So we combine those two functions. Uh, basically, we are tracking all your user activity on your website or in your web or mobile app. We track each page hit, we, each event they've performed. Uh, and we are a CRM. So each user have a uh, his single profile where you can see whole history of this user, but also all their attributes. So on what plan he is, uh, what is his purchase history, if you are an e-commerce company. Uh, and based on this data, you can reach the right audience with the right message through the right channel. So we cover such channels as email marketing, uh, push notification, SMS, but also also whole on-site communication. So uh, live chat, chatbots, uh, pop-ups, uh, dynamic HTML content. So like all-in-one marketing automation platform, but we cover also some uh, support functions like a ticketing system, knowledge base, live chat and chatbots uh, are also uh, many times used as a support tool, not a marketing tool. Yeah, so this is, this is what, who we are. We focus on mainly uh, two markets, uh, e-commerce uh, e and uh, SaaS businesses, but many of our customers are just online businesses. Yes, so, so they are marketplaces or some mobile businesses. It's hard to define them as a, as a specific industry or the specific uh, business model, we call them smart online businesses. This is our Got ideal uh, persona. Yeah, that, that's really great because, uh, you know, one of the reason why we reached out to you and because, you know, uh, what we do at the custom fit is very in sync with what actually you guys do. Like basically, if you see custom fit, it's all about hyper personalization platform. Like we say that, okay, your website can be your growth engine. No one can sell or no one can market better than your website, right? It's all about converting the website visitors to the quality leads, right? So that's the thing what we do. Uh, yeah, let's let's go uh, further. Like, uh, can you, uh, like, I want to know, okay, from your side, what is that one marketing metric, uh, you know, which you love to go, you know, think in a way that, okay, which you want to go to picnic on a lonely island. For example, in my case, I love conversion rate. Yeah, sure. Mine is similar, uh, like conversion rate, but I believe that you need not only one metric, uh, but two metrics. Uh, one uh, quality, so conversion rate, but mm -hmm. also quantity metrics. And in my case, it's just a financial metric, uh, monthly recurring revenue, because sure, you can uh, have even like 50% conversion rate, but if your website is visited by 10 people per month, yeah, it's, mm. uh, it's still, you will have only five <coughs> clients per month. Uh, so so uh, you won't have a scale, you won't have a volume, uh, which you are interested in. So. I would like uh, to come. I would like to take this uh, on this uh, lonely island two metrics like one qua quality, so conversion rate, and second quantity, so probably MRR. Yeah, that's really nice. Okay, the way you put over the thing, right? So, and also let me know what is the source of the information you keep yourself updated with, like you know, with respect to the marketing industry updates. I'm trying to read a lot, yeah, so, so I'm following uh, many industry leaders, uh, many s uh, smart people on LinkedIn, sometimes on Facebook, like I'm not a Twitter guy, I know that many people uh, goes from, uh, take some information from that source, but like I, I never like go into Twitter deeply. Uh, I listen uh, to a lot of podcasts because I, I like audio is the format uh, I believe uh, m most suits me like uh, many audiobooks. Yeah, so, so Audible and like Amazon Engine recommends uh, books that will uh, will fit my needs uh, yeah and uh, probably i can't name the one source yeah but like podcasts uh, following smart people on linkedin or uh, on facebook and and with audiobooks yeah those are 
sure. sources no, the, I'm getting information from. No, that exactly. Like even uh, if you consider my side also, right? Like uh, daily, I go through two podcasts. That's the compulsory thing. One at the time when it when I jog in the morning. So basically, I mean that like one hour of the time. Okay, I just try to you know come like you know go through as many podcasts as possible. Like basically 30, 30 minute kind of the thing. And at the night before I sleep, okay, that's I maintain that habit these days. That okay, you just go and listen to one. For example, these days I'm listening to Master of Scales by Reed Hoffman. Uh, like the, the way they put out is really excellent, right? So some of the yeah. insights which you get, and I try to incur like basically I try to incorporate that thing in the next couple of weeks. See how this thing goes, right? So yeah, I'm I, I have uh, some different like habits. Uh, I'm going in, in the evening on the cycle, so so I'm cycling, and then where is the place where I'm like listening? So I am taking like sometimes one hour, sometimes two hour. <laughs> round uh, over the city and like this is the place where i can like uh just <laughs> listen to interesting uh content yeah true true uh can can you share with me uh you know what is the most successful campaign you handled so far and at the same time also you know one failure campaign too like we want to learn okay how like from like both from your experiences the positive so, one the like, successful one and the failure one yeah so probably like making business a success it's not a one campaign but it's like uh, a lot of small improvements mm -hmm. uh, but in terms of like think i think we've done pretty good in user.com in february this year we've organized a SaaS growth summit this is uh, this was an uh, online conference for especially for SaaS businesses uh, where we were were able to grab really amazing speakers like um, Nathan Latka, like Patrick Campbell, like uh, Pete Lee, Elijah, Wes Bash, Rand Fishkin, uh, Takey Trader. So, so really like top of uh, top experts in terms of industry and it really generate a lot of uh, leads for our business it was like very profitable uh, in terms of leads and uh, like eventually uh, as a sales so yeah i've even read uh, write down some uh, medium post uh, oh, yeah. because okay. before this conference i was looking for some like valuable resources how to organize a virtual event successfully and uh -huh. i didn't find any so uh, like a lot of uh, content marketing, but without uh, uh, specific numbers, without the specific uh, like to do's. And uh, we've organized such event and decided okay. that if somebody will be on our place, uh, I will, there will be an instruction how to do it. Yeah, so I can share with you this link. Sure, sure, that sure, sure, sure. that will be really helpful. <laughs> Yeah, and yeah. in terms of, uh, so this is like a one-time campaign. <coughs> I believe that successful is uh, making a successful business is not a, like one campaign, but it's uh, like a lot of uh, small improvements. In terms of our failure, I believe that our freemium model in user.com, we are uh, thinking that it was a failure. And currently we are uh, in couple of weeks we we will like kill our freemium model uh -huh. uh, we hoped that we will gain scale through through our freemium model yeah so so we've offer uh, live chat web push and crm uh, totally for free yeah uh, uh -huh. And being honest, it didn't scale. We we were checking that uh, HubSpot have made um, pretty good success based on their freemium model because they they are gaining scale uh, because HubSpot CRM is the first CRM because it's free. Uh, people are used to it, and then they can like uh, when they have some money, they can go through. Um, 
uh, the paid version yeah in our case being honest it totally didn't work so uh, the scale probably wasn't uh, so big we we didn't uh, gain a, a, such traction on this freemium model and like when we are checking in numbers probably more customers uh, like uh, left some uh, paid version to use a free model than uh -huh. uh, convert from free version to a paying one. So, so uh, we didn't invest in promoting uh -huh. uh, free version because it doesn't make sense. But yeah, uh, freemium, it's not always a good, uh, good uh, way. In our case, it totally didn't uh, went well. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Nice. Good. Good that you shared that it's a very valuable info. Okay, for any of the marketers, right? So just to evaluate it, perfect. Okay, make sure that what works. At least try to do some good research and then okay, try to promote that thing. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Because like uh, I have uh, like I have facts which uh, was telling me that in my market it could uh, work but like uh, what's what is working in your competitor uh, in your competitors uh, does not mean that it will uh, work in you because it's too many variables have to be taken into consideration yeah yeah that's really nice uh, and and tell me one thing. According to you, what is the biggest challenge? Uh, you know, today's 2021 uh, year, the marketers are facing. I think that like year doesn't matter because like, uh, mm, of course, there are some trends uh, which are changing uh, from year to year. Uh, and in 2021, it would be probably like change changes uh, in uh, iOS 14 and uh, some uh, things which uh, which are results out of it. Yes, yeah, so mm -hmm. attribution and Facebook ads have been changed. Uh, like it's not so easy to track people. There is uh, many like uh, upcoming changes in terms of privacy that maybe like cookies uh, oh, oh. third part cookies won't work in the way we we are used to uh, correct, correct. Uh, to work but like i believe mm, that like the main challenges from marketers it doesn't mm, uh, and it doesn't changes a lot on uh, through many years is that uh, like good definition of your ideal persona yeah so if you know to whom you are selling and mm -hmm. what you are selling so what is your value proposition uh, what value bring your solution or your service or your product brings to your customers uh, this is uh, Still very very important and very underestimated in uh, along marketers so like more strategic uh, questions for whom my service is and what they are taking out of uh, out of it uh, are the main challenges and I believe that uh, on th on that area marketers should focus mainly uh, it doesn't matter is it to, to 2021 2022 no, true, or, true. <laughs> like uh, covid got you any certain challenges which you need to cope up or you like you know that made you to think marketing in a different way or any of the hacks which you did to you know uh, to get past that thing uh, anything in that line uh, in terms of like we are focusing on online businesses so uh, we were always a global company remote first company uh, so in our case it doesn't change a lot yeah so like uh, sure many customers have to like change their businesses sure. many customers from for example for from tourist uh, mm, 
Go market yeah. uh, okay. have churned or had to stop their businesses. Also, automotive uh, industry yeah. uh, hurt, was hurt it a lot. Uh, but in general, like e-commerce grew, uh, SaaS businesses uh, are still growing. So, so like COVID was a, a good thing for our business uh, in general. But uh, yeah, like when COVID hits uh, in Europe in uh, April, last year we have the biggest churn ever huh. but huh. also the biggest new mrr ever so <laughs> so, so uh, at the end we were like on the zero so so, so okay, okay yeah okay. good 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 so can you tell me uh, any tools which you started using uh, you know uh, recently which you are really like of um, you know any platform any tool like uh, in terms of our marketing stat we are dog uh, food eating, so so we are <laughs> mainly using user.com in terms of uh, whole channels communication um, and to email marketing, to push notifications, everything is, uh, our CRM is also uh, user.com. Uh, so, but besides uh, that, we, we are heavily using uh, Figma, and Webflow to some website uh, landing pages creation, etc. Uh, for SDR team or Loom, um, we are experimenting a lot. Yeah, for for example, Conversion AI, one of our customers, uh, have created a great technology that what we are uh, using. Yeah, they are like uh, enabling AI to, to do better copy. Yeah, so so uh, we are testing many tools. Yeah, mm -hmm. and like if they are okay, we are uh, sticking to it. Yeah, so so, but many times we are just checking it out through one or two months, and then if we see that it doesn't bring us L, uh, as much value as we need, we we are resigning. Mm -hmm. That's nice. That's nice. Uh, and can you tell me, like, uh, you know, see, uh, with the custom fit, right? We always try to, you know, tell our customers that there are three phases. One thing is understand your customers well, right? The moment the visitor lands on your website. So basically, you need to have a clear understanding of what's happening with respect to the particular visitor. What is he doing? Where is he feeling, feeling friction and all those things? And then we say that, okay, you know, custom fit enables you to do hyper personalization by making you understanding who the visitor is, what to personalize, when to personalize and whom to personalize. Right. So on the first part, like how do you emphasize the fact that what is the importance of understanding of the visitors or understanding of your audience who are hitting on your website? Yeah, I, I think that like uh, talking with customers is a uh, like you, you need to make to uh, kind of like measurement and uh, gaining this understanding by one it's like uh checking the stats yeah so w what is uh conversion rate in one segment and what's conversion rate in the other segment yeah what what is the best um, uh, fit for your customers so segmenting your user base uh, uh, uh but then you i i really like speaking with people yes yeah? so, so of course on some scale you can't speak with everybody uh, mm -hmm. but uh, like uh making it as a constant process that you are like getting on a call after they purchased and you are uh, like trying to understand what was the value that you've uh, bring to this customer and uh, understanding how they make decision what was the main like uh, arguments that they decided to go with you not with your competitors that uh, can bring you a lot of insights which is uh, very hard to like grab from like raw that data and uh, looking on some statistics in google analytics or, or amplitude or any other like uh, analytical tool yeah that's great and uh, what's your experience with the you know account based marketing like whether that worked for you or what is that okay you think uh, you know the people need to do to get it uh, you know the full value out of it yeah, I, I believe that uh, like account-based marketing, it's uh, uh, 
like we are doing account-based marketing and many of our customers are using our solution for like enriching data about specific companies and we are also selling like through outbound process so we are trying to hit the right uh, right target and work with companies not the specific persons yes because sometimes uh, the marketing is our gateway to enter the company sometimes it's support team sometimes it's an IT team yeah because we are like API first and uh, like we are very technical marketers mm -hmm. yes yeah? so, mm -hmm. so we prefer to to speak with companies where where the IT team is engaged in the process yeah so uh, uh, yeah, like I believe that account based marketing, especially for like B2B businesses, is the only way. I uh, I love inbound marketing where you are gaining a lot of traffic, but okay. currently yeah. we are uh, like doing some shift uh, in terms of our marketing approach because we, we as I said before, we've launched this freemium version. Uh, we mm, invest some assets in content marketing and we were generating a lot of leads. Of course, we try to like uh, nurture them with automatic drip campaigns, uh, etc. So we are trying to automate it. But even with the trials on some level, we need to put a lot of effort to uh -huh. like qualify them properly. Yeah, so right. one person was like nonstop calling, not even one person, but uh, two persons uh, were like uh, their only job was to like qualify the leads which come into our like created a trial. Is it a really good fit for us or, or not? Yeah. And uh, right now we are doing such shift that we want when we've analyzed churn. Yeah. Uh -huh. So which customers uh, is staying with us for most uh, for the longest period yeah because in subscription business uh, of course like monthly uh, recurring revenue and average revenue per user monthly is crucial uh, is very important but how you long your customer is with you so customer lifetime value in the whole uh, his uh, lifetime cycle is much more important and we uh, we see such uh, trends that like smaller companies are chain churning a lot and uh, sure. are uh, having a lot of problems uh, via uh, our live chat support they they need a lot of resources from our mm -hmm. side uh, and we and like when you are checking the math sometimes they are not profitable yeah, mm -hmm. so, so, uh, like our idea currently is to move in the higher market because many times those uh, bigger customers uh, which we can provide value in much easier way and they don't have so many uh, like requirements in terms of features or if they have uh, some feature request they can pay for it uh, so, so uh, uh, yeah, sometimes you, you need to like mm, do this analysis and check what customers are the most valuable for your company. Yeah, and uh, check uh, in our situation, mm -hmm. it was simple analysis. Yeah, okay. on what kind of, because we have a dynamic pricing based on uh -huh. the number of customers and we see this uh, simple trend that uh, if the customer is bigger, it uh. stays much longer uh -huh, with us. Uh -huh, uh -huh. He pays on the monthly basis a lot, uh, much more money, and in general, um, he generates much more revenue. So we are shifting our like focus in terms of marketing and, uh, and sales approach to to bigger customers. Yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. That really makes sense a lot, right? So now, like, uh, if I go to user.com, right, I can see that user.com, you know, um, uh, caters to wide variety of the audience, right? Different company sizes, okay, different regions, because it's a worldwide thing, right? 
and uh, yeah. different uh, you know revenue metrics with respect to the different companies and all how do you cater like basically uh, the question here is like you know uh, how do you ensure that your website is talking with respect to that segment of the audience as if say that you know say that i am coming from a, a startup background onto your website how your website yeah. can communicate me that hey this is the platform tailor made for you just based on your use cases because we know you better yeah uh, this is what, what we like like we've dropped in the trap because uh, we focus on many markets and many like industries the two main ones are like as i said saas businesses and uh, e-commerce sites and we were like creating uh, if we see in our like customer base that some group of customers was pretty successful we were creating a separate landing page for them but on the some uh, some level we are currently that we, we we have some customers uh so so there are a lot of uh, separate landing pages for separate industries for separate departments but um it uh, brings us another problem that uh, it looks that uh, this tool can serve so many industries that probably not my industry and uh, okay. this is like because uh, if every if uh, something is for everybody uh, it's for nobody yeah mm -hmm. so, so uh, currently mm, uh, in some time i hope uh, third quarter maybe fourth quarter this year we will rebuild our website to just narrow it to the fewer like target groups yeah so so like more like limit number of landing pages with those ideal persona to 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 like uh, speak with them and talk with them in more accurate uh, language uh, to to like increase conversion yeah makes sense makes sense so uh, what's the like I, I just want you to ask in this way like what is that one advice uh, you want to give for entry level marketer for their successful career uh, I believe that like if you are in the first days of entering uh, marketing uh, industry in general I would recommend to learn basic of analytics yeah so go through all the three knowledge uh, varies on market so Google Analytics Google Tag Manager uh, maybe Google Optimize uh, learnings from those courses are, are totally free but oh. many tools like uh, Amplitude Segment or even like more advanced like Tableau offers a lot of knowledge and oh. it's available totally for free so uh, if I can like recommend what you should learn it's like learn analytics yeah uh, because if you will understand the data you will be able to operate with this data uh, you will gain an ability to like verify what, what what is working and what's not working yeah so so like at the beginning i would start with analytics perfect yeah that, that's one of the perfect advice Right. Uh, who, who is your marketing mentor, uh, Mike? Like, uh, which to whom you look up to when you are in any of the confusion state, or you need some help in understanding whether, like, uh, you know, A, A B testing on yourself, whether actually, you know, I am doing correct or I need to do something better. So, one guy you you want to give a shout out on this. Okay, so so uh, I think that I have more than one uh, one guy. It would be for mostly from Poland, uh, from Eastern Europe, where we are based. It will be Pavel Tkaczek or Mike Sadowski. Mike Sadowski is a CEO of Brand Twenty Four. Uh, but like being honest, I have a lot of connections in marketing industry, and I know what kind of specific like experience and um, speci specialization uh, who in my like personal uh, 
uh, connections have the knowledge about this specific uh, issue? Is it copywriting or is it branding mm -hmm. or is it some technological uh, issue or is it like analytics or is it like cold mailing? Uh, I'm uh, targeting like my specific problems. Yeah, to the specific uh, friends mostly, but but also what I've learned that if you uh, need some knowledge and you know that somebody have some expertise in expertise. it, it's uh, it's very easy to like reach out to him on like LinkedIn and hey, I have such and such problem. I know that you're an expert uh, in such area. Uh, can we like uh, jump on a call? Maybe you you could advise me. And if you are telling like precise problem and it's not like 10 pages of like <laughs> understanding the problem yeah. uh, many times those persons say okay let's let's jump on the call maybe i can help yeah and like because this pay forward philosophy is uh, really like hitting true. the market mm, like really yeah no most, that's, that's very true uh, many experts which are like first pages uh, experts and uh, are taking for consultancy uh, I, I, like thousands of dollars if you are an honest uh, with uh, them and you ask them for help they many times like just just give it to you yeah true, true, true. no that that happened with us also a lot of time uh, like basically when we started our journey right so a lot of inputs we got from the fellow marketers through the linkedin thing right so yeah, yeah. so one, one question like uh, you know uh, what do you think is the most effective way to increase a brand's online presence uh, like in our case buying a pretty good domain works pretty well <laughs> so, so yeah, that, yeah that is really good when users.com like i didn't i wondered why you didn't got the domain at initial thing instead of user engage <laughs> Yes, yeah, so, so we we've uh, started as a user engage IO, then we bought uh, user engage .com, yeah, and uh, after our first financial round, we decided to go with with like simple domain user .com. It's it's it really helps us a lot, yeah, because like um, it wasn't cheap being honest, yeah, but Obviously. but uh, but it was a good investment, yeah. So in online <laughs> business, when you have this four letter domain, uh, simple one, and really connected to the industry you are in, it's a really good uh, like growth hack for from our perspective yeah so uh, domain and the naming is is really really important uh, but also what's the like connections with with this brand yeah so so we are telling always like turn every visitor into happy customer automation and like uh, right now we will try to like include in our communication more customer data platform more more of this like phrases mm -hmm. uh, but like uh, good good naming is really important in terms of branding i believe oh that's great uh, what's your take like what's your favorite one uh, paid or organic i prefer paid because uh, it's scalable okay uh, or uh, organic uh, I might be wrong because you know like uh, I'm the in, the in the industry of marketing automation CRM and my competitor is a HubSpot so uh, if you want to compete with HubSpot in, yeah, right. like yeah. SEO and like organic traffic like forget about it they are f f like on the market yeah, for so yeah, long time. Yeah. they have like created so much content and it's like it, it, it's impossible to compete with them oh, in the in that uh, area it's, but uh, they've done a hell good job yes so it's it's really um, hard sense. 
Uh, and in paid uh, paid uh, media have a really really good uh, advantage that it's uh, simply scalable that uh, not all channels because for example uh, with captera and get up yeah we we've seen that okay this is like marketing channel which uh, brings us a positive roi so let's try to scale it but it's because it's a bidding option it's not so uh, easy that you can line uh, scale it in a linear way yeah it's to some level it's still profitable but on the uh, some level it's it it's not yeah so, so uh, but most paid uh, like source of traffic are simply scalable so if like 1000 bring you 10 customers if you will throw 10000 you will get 100 of customers yes yeah? so, so this is a really really uh, good advantage in terms of paid mm -hmm. versus organic correct but how do you ensure the roi on the campaigns uh, to be optimal one like how do you make sure okay the return on investment, what you get, it's, uh, you know, what you're spending versus what you get in optimal way. Spend a lot of time in spreadsheet. <laughs> yes, <laughs> so, so uh, it's so simple. Yeah, spend a lot of time in your analytical tool. It sometimes okay. might be like Google Analytics. Sometimes it might be, uh, I loved Facebook Analytics because the attribution of Facebook is, uh, in my my humble opinion more accurate than google analytics it's a different way of measuring things uh, but we are looking at may uh, on the same data from different angles so we are analyzing it in google analytics but we are analyzing it also in user.com but we are uh, also doing some analyst in like uh, google spreadsheet or, or metabase in our case uh, as a tool to, to to, to like uh, explore the data in more deeply a deeper way yeah so yeah no, that that's very true even actually we tell our uh, customers right like it's a basically typically we see the marketing uh, from the marketing angle right so they look at three uh, metrics right one thing is how what's the impression that ad is getting and seeing that ad how many landed onto your website and how many finally reached your goal points yeah. So there can so many things can happen between those two points, like landing onto your web page and going to your goal points, right? It's a kind of completely a gray area over there. So what actually yeah. we tell is you need to have a clear understanding what is happening, not just off the site, also on the site. Understand what is exactly where they are going, what is the friction they are creating for which segment of the audience, okay, it's not going to your goal points and all. No, that that's very it's very very good info. Yeah. And checking how much uh, you're paying for for specific like uh, acquisition sources. Yeah, correct, correct, and monitoring that thing. True, and uh, like, um, uh, do you think email channel is still one of the preferred channel or it's uh, dead? Yeah, I think that uh, like email is a very wide uh, uh, area so we have like cold emails uh, outreach which can be do correct and could, can be done uh, very very bad like spamming people uh, we have like newsletters we have many triggering campaigns and like I believe that email still is one of the most uh, ROI positive like uh -huh. channels, but like uh, email marketing, as I said, is a very, very wide uh, issue. Yeah, so, so cold emails is a different case. Uh, newsletters is a different case. Like your triggering campaigns are a different case. Uh, like writing a, an email uh, directly manually is a different case yes, yes so, so, okay. like i believe uh yeah emails still have a lot of potential and mm -hmm. many people are like uh not like exploring uh half of That's the okay. abilities okay. that email can bring them yeah makes sense makes sense Finally, uh, it would be great if you could you know, share any precious information with our audience, which can make them a successful marketer. Like, I believe that uh, don't focus on tools, 
and this is the message from a tool provider. Uh, focus, <laughs> no, that's true. Focus, uh... focus on uh, failing a lot. Yeah, because like when we are failing, we are learning. And I think that not the most successful campaigns are the, the most important for you, but uh, how fast you are failing mm -hmm. and if you are failing really fast and you can iterate faster than your competitor you can check more hypotheses uh, that you do is uh, is what you would will make you a better uh, more successful marketer so don't be afraid of like failing and fail a lot and learn a lot because uh, this is this speed of cycle is one of the most important uh, ability of current marketer that uh, okay I can verify will Facebook uh, ads work for me and I don't know two or three months. Yeah, I don't have to be uh, the, the best Facebook ads ma uh, marketer on the world, mm -hmm. but like mm -hmm. I can check if this uh, like tool or this mm -hmm. channel will bring me uh, profits. Uh, like, mm -hmm. of course, check the uh, marketing trends, read a lot, listen a lot, learn a lot. But uh, the best way of learning is like making a failure. So so, so uh, if you will be able to grab some conclusions out of it and uh, check what, what is working, what is not working, I think that, yeah, uh, it might sound strange, but fail as uh, often as possible this is the best uh, way to be a successful marketer yeah i mean that's really a gem of the advice mike i really admire that because uh, you know like i i went through that situation like basically during my previous company backpackle okay, we did that that thing like we try to make sure that like, it's a fail fast as a formula for us we try to do not something which can take us months and months to you know realize that hey this is not working instead of why can't we day in a week's effort okay in a month's effort at max right so that that i i can completely relate to that thing Cool. Uh, thanks, Mike. Uh, thanks a lot for your time. Um, so this was thank really you, great you. talking to you. And thanks a bit. We uh, it looks like we extended a bit, like uh, like like 15 minutes of time. But uh, this was a gem of the information. I just want to capture it and you know play it to our audience. Definitely, they I'm, I'm sure that okay they will get a lot from this thing. And I feel okay they can even reach out to you for any further advice. Sure. Sure, sure. Thanks, Thank Mike. you, Ashbin, for having me here. It was a pleasure. I hope uh, your audience uh, will find it useful. So have a great day. Bye-bye. Perfect. Thank you. Let me just...